HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello, and welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Lose It for the Library program, hosted by CrossFit Resilience, came to an end, and the winners received their awards. Hiller's Sports is nearing the end of the season, and Greyhound Friends will introduce you to Rocky. But first, a finalist for the Assistant Superintendent of Hopkinton Public Schools has been chosen, and the finalist, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, recently took questions at a public forum hosted at the middle school. Everything is involved in that, and what, what I would also call cognitive endurance, that need for kids to be able to look at this, and then look at this, and then look at this, and stick to it all the way down the page. The community was invited down to the Hopkinton Middle School Library for a question and answer session with the finalist for the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum position, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh. Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Kathy McLeod, explained the process of narrowing down the candidates for the position. So we posted the position and we had 53 applicants. For, of the 53 applicants, we screened 18 of them um, and during the paper screening process. And then we reduced that to six finalists that we brought in for the first tier of interviews. Um, that was interview committee made up of administrators and um, teachers and parents. Um, next, the, that committee recommended three finalists to the second tier and that was basically central office the directors that met with Dr. Cavanaugh. Uh, the next step in our process was to go out to Uxbridge and to meet with at 12 or 15 administrators that she's been working with in different interviews during that process. We were there for the morning and we were able to have candid conversations with people that she's currently working with in Uxbridge. And so tonight is our final step in the process. Um, she met with the school committee um, before this meeting and then the public forum. And finally, um, the school committee will speak with me, give me their feedback on their thoughts, and I will be making a recommendation to the school committee um, on the 25th, so their next school committee meeting, so February 25th, um, following my, my opportunity to have a conversation with them. I haven't had a chance to t speak with them um, tonight, but um, Dr. Cavanaugh is, we are very, very enthusiastic about moving her forward, um, and she is the finalist that we're recommending at this point. Uh, we'll wait, as I said, to speak with the school committee on their thoughts, having just interviewed her tonight. So I'm Carol Cavanaugh. Um, I have spent the last 25 years in public education. I started in the Auburn Public Schools and in the Auburn Public Schools I was an English and Latin teacher. I became an English department chair there and then after uh, 13 years in that district I moved on to the Westboro Public Schools. And again I was an English teacher, an English department chair, and a Latin teacher and then I moved into administration after five years in Westboro. So for five years I was the assistant principal of Westboro High School and in that role I was very largely the person who did all of the curriculum work there. In addition to working at Westboro High School, I was also running an educational consulting business and uh, so that kind of sort of fueled my need to do curriculum work because I was working with people pre-K to 12 in a variety of districts in central Massachusetts. I teach for Lesley University and Worcester State University and so I was working with teachers in that capacity as well and in 2008 I went back to Lesley University to earn my PhD in curriculum and instruction, specifically in reading and writing strategies for students um, in grades 6 to 12. Um, so uh, that's really my, my educational sort of background and I guess just sort of casually I think I've always wanted to have a position as an assistant superintendent in curriculum and instruction. Um, that's really what, what has fueled my, um, my learning and my professional work for probably the last two decades. Um, and what attracted you to this position in Hopkinton? 
Well, I am currently working in the Uxbridge Public Schools as their Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. And what has happened in the Uxbridge Public Schools is that there is a severe budget deficit and I was unsure of the stability of my position because um, if if, I, if there had been a more stable sense of what was going to happen with the budget there and, and I had a sense that my job was very secure, I would probably have just stayed where I was in Uxbridge. Um, so I did just recently apply to a couple of positions and I think I was selective about where I was applying. I did want it to be relatively close to home. I did want to go to a district where I knew that families were very much invested in education. And so I applied to the Hopkinton <laughs> position and when I got to the interview, the first one, um, I had a very good sense that the people at that table, and there were probably 13 of them, uh, were very, very much interested um, in the skill set I could bring to the district, but they were also very, very much invested in teaching and learning and students and families and curriculum and achievement, and, and I thought that that was, that was lovely. When I got to the second interview, there was a bit more levity, and I thought these are people with whom I could sort of just fit right in, in terms of um, our personality personalities and those pieces. So I'm really excited to be here. I hope for the rest of this process things will work out and, uh, and that I will be uh, ready to come on board next year. All right, well best of luck to you. Thank you, it's a pleasure. The final decision about the assistant superintendent position is expected to be revealed at the school committee meeting on March 25th. CrossFit Resilience, a workout facility on 25 South Street, teamed up with the Hopkinton Library to create the Lose It for the Library program. Over 160 people participated to shred some pounds and raise some money for the library renovation and expansion project. The program raised just over $5,000 and 50% went to the library, while the other 50% went to Ted Barker Hook and Katie Cox, the male and female participant who lost the most weight during the month-long program. Okay, please come in. <laughs> so here is the big presentation of the checks for the Hopkinton Weight Loss Challenge. We had, we started with 167, and you, Katie, and you, Ted, end up being the two winners. How much did you end up uh, losing? I lost 37 pounds. 17 point... 17 point two... Two? Two, three, two, nine? Unbelievable, like unbelievable. That. Nobody was even close. How did you do it? Uh, I was disciplined in diet. I worked out like a fiend. I sweat like crazy. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> no, we were taking wagers on what the number would be, and we didn't think anybody would exceed 14%. Yeah. So you crushed it. Nobody was even close. If not for you, we would have been right. It was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. Happy I made you wrong. That's an amazing effort. <laughs> and here is a check for $1,252. Congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well earned, Ted. Awesome. Thank there you, you very go. much. Congratulations. <laughs> and Katie, how much did you lose? I lost 16 pounds. And you started thin to begin with. What did you get down to? Uh, 117. 117. I think you lost 12%. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable in 30 days. I knew when you set your mind to something, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. And you had your mind focused on this. Here's the check for Katie Cox for another $1,252. Congratulations. <laughs> and of course, all of this was done by these two and the 165 other participants for the benefit of the library, the Library Foundation. Um, Laura, you want to comment a little bit on what the library is trying to do? Absolutely. Uh, we are renovating and expanding. We expect to break ground this year. It's been a process that's gone on for several years now, and we're getting close to the end. Um, we've been privately fundraising. Hopkinton Public Library Foundation set a goal to raise a million dollars, and we're now at 75% of that goal, thanks to everybody in the community, including Drew and all of these participants that are contributing in, in any way. It really, really helps, and we are so grateful, and we really appreciate all the hard work that you and your team put in for this. And, and that there are so many people and such enthusiasm in the community. It's a great project. It's going to be great for the entire community yes. and especially the kids in the community. I know everybody's is, really looking yeah. forward to it. So we're glad to play a small Thank role you. in the expansion. Thank you. So here's a check for 50% of the proceeds, Thank uh, two thousand five hundred and five dollars. Great. Hopefully it goes to good use. Thank you. Okay. So I guess this is what you guys really want is the small <laughs> <envelope>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
it was hard. It took discipline. Um, I wish I could say it was torture. It wasn't. It makes me kind of feel guilty about how long it took to put myself in shape, frankly. But um, I don't know, you know, diet, cut out cookies, cut out cupcakes, pizza, burritos, cut it down to oatmeal, fruit, and, and some turkey breast, and you work out. And <laughs> drink a lot of water. How'd you like doing the workouts? Oh, I hated everyone. <laughs> But if you can see the pounds melting in a way and you think you have a chance to, uh, to help out the library and win some money along the way, it worked out okay. I think my family would say I was pretty good natured through the whole thing. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. So uh, what are you going to do with your earnings? Uh, from the beginning, part of my hope if I won, uh, besides, again, helping the library, um, is to get a dishwasher. We've been without a dishwasher for almost a year. Um, but this buys a much fancier dishwasher than we need. So um, I plan to give a portion of what's left over anyway to a school. I, I'm a teacher and we led a service learning trip to the Dominican Republic last spring and the school is desperately, desperately poor. Um, at one point a student was looking for a pencil. We were doing a mural on a wall and he wanted to sketch out the mural and it took us 20 minutes to find a pencil at this school. So we've already sent um, several hundred dollars worth of school supplies to them last June, and we're in the middle of putting together another bundle of school supplies. And some of this money will go to the Coral School in Caparete, the Dominican Republic. Wow, terrific. It was a great month. I go to CrossFit every day, so the workouts were workouts, like normal, but the diet was the big, the big thing. Very lean, meats and green vegetables. Uh, that was, it was tough to stick to. <laughs> I bet. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. How do you think the program went? I think a lot of people enjoyed it and lost some weight. Can you talk about the outcome a little bit? Absolutely. The uh, the I guess the the real um, uh, using real numbers is going to really tell the story. So we had 167 people sign up and participate, and the average amount of weight lost by each participant was 4.9%. Uh, said another way, the average amount of weight lost by each participant was about 9 to 10 pounds. So these guys really, really killed it. They were on the far extreme, obviously. That's why they're the winners. But overall, the entire group got a little bit leaner, I think a lot healthier. Uh, they embraced a lot of the exercise tips that we gave. And uh, I think in that regard, it was a great month. Um, Secondarily, as I mentioned before, being able to make a contribution like we did with the help of all the participants was very gratifying. So hopefully uh, uh, the library will put it to good use and the expansion will go a little bit faster. Congratulations, Ted and Katie and all the other participants who shredded some pounds and helped out the library. The Hopkinton Library fundraising is at a rapid pace. The library also received another check last week. Friends of the Library Treasurer Barbara Beal presented Chair of the Hopkinton Library Foundation Laura Barry $5,000 towards the expansion project. Well, it's actually my pleasure to present a check for $5,000 from the Friends of the Library to the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. It is our second installment on the naming rights for the Wi-Fi Cafe. So we have committed 15000 which will mean uh, we actually will have given 20000 by the time the campaign is over because we donated initially $5,000 for the naming rights to the staff room. But I'd just like to say it's an exciting, it's an exciting time for everybody. It is. It really is. It really is an exciting time. And they, we, we greatly appreciate the support of the Friends of the Library, our very close, um, closely assimilated organization who... Um, does separate fundraising, but has supported Hopkinton Public Library Foundation from day one mm -hmm. um, in our mission of raising money for the new building, and we appreciate it, and we've enjoyed working together. Well, thank you, thank you. And we go way back, actually, when you first started. Yep, that's we right. Gave, we gave them the seed money of yep. $2,000 yep. for the first Princess Tea. Yep. And supported our events and so forth, and, right. and just have been fantastic. Well, great. these folks are fantastic fundraisers, I'll tell you. They really are. They're just great. So the whole thing is very exciting. It is exciting. It's, it's a pleasure for our organizations to work together as well as we do. Yeah. The library expansion and renovation project is expected to break ground on Friday, March 11th at 10 a.m. 
Be sure to stay tuned to our website, hcam.tv, for updates on the project. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update. Courtney has our HCAM insider and Greyhound friends. will introduce you to our pet of the month, Rocky. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Terosian for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. In the upcoming months on HCAM News, we will be bringing you two pets of the month that are available for you to adopt. One from the Greyhound Friends and one from the Baypath Humane Society. On this week's episode, Louise Coleman of Greyhound Friends introduced us to a very nice Greyhound named Rocky. This is a dog named Rocky who's uh of what's called a, uh, a fawn. He's very hunts are always tattooed in their ears for their birthdays. He was born in, it says 8 2, so that means August, the eighth month. 2 means 2012. B is second puppy in the litter. And then this year they have their registration number with the National Greyhound Association. So they can't put a ringer in the race, they can't put somebody in who looks like Rocky. Um, so he's uh, good natured. Uh, he's not good with cats, wouldn't be good with small animals. Uh, be fine with people. He uh, likes to go for walks. He's generally very quiet. I think he'd be good for people who work. I mean, he likes to lie around a lot. He uh, is uh, in great physical condition. Would love to go uh, running around. Uh, we here at Greyhound Friends have an acre that's fenced in, so people are more than welcome to bring dogs down here anytime and, and let them play. They, uh, you know, really do love to be off the leash and, and to run around. So I mean, it's, and it's a lot of fun to watch them. So they uh, they do well uh, walking. They like to run, and they especially like to eat and sleep. So they're good for people who work. Who work. Is is uh, Rocky good with other dogs? Rocky is good with other dogs. I think he'd be good with probably more with bigger dogs. But he, uh, yeah, he gets along well. He's a good boy. And I think he'd be okay with kids. Um, it's it's well, what we usually advise is for people to come in with a whole family and take the dogs out to walk around and see how everybody does together. It's always like putting puzzle pieces together. So. We just have to make sure the pieces fit. If you want to meet Rocky or any other dogs that may be available, feel free to head down to Greyhound Friends located at 167 Saddle Hill Road. They would love to hear from you. Hiller's winter sports teams are either in postseason action or nearing the end of the regular season and making a final push for playoff seating. Here is the latest Hiller sports update. Hiller's girls swimming had a great showing at the sectionals. 41 teams took part as the Hillers finished all the way in second place through 12 events. They placed only one point behind Duxbury while upping third place finishing Norwell by 19 points. On Saturday, February 13th, the Hillers hockey team celebrated senior night before taking on the always tough Medway Mustangs. And the game was a thriller. Front, it's knocked down. And Finlayson tries to get out, but he can't. Kept in by Leland. Shot and a goal. It went in from the point. Circle, it goes. There's a wide open shot and a save through traffic. And it goes in. Oh. 
Oh, there's a save on a wraparound. Boy, that thing came out kind of funny. Did he get a pad on that? He must have. I think it surprised everybody in the place, including the referees. It looks like it got underneath his pad, then came forward. All right, we get ready for third period action with the Hillers leading, uh, trailing rather, 2 nothing. And Rick, it was a uh, no goal second period. And uh, after the first two goals were scored in the first period, now Volke, another one from the point, uh, from the circle, no good. But Allen comes down, pitch in front, tipped in, trying to go in. I think Karpinski got it. And the Hillers trail two to one. Up ice. He's defended by two players. Tries to go to the point. Pick and takes a shot. It's blocking. And it goes in. It was tipped in. And the Hillers have tied it. Yeah, Pickens just took the puck and moved his way to center. And that was actually a high shot that Cornell could actually see because we had a, a clean shot into it, Mike. And I don't. I don't know who tipped it. I'm pretty sure it was tipped and came down below Purnell. Fan the bouncing puck. Abbott now chops it down, but it goes behind the net. Rolf now with some speed takes his man shot and a goal. With 57 seconds to go in the game, Medway scores and they take a three to two lead. The Mustangs handed the Hillers their third loss of the season. Hillers would take down Milford in the following game, eight to nothing to improve to 15 and three on the season. Hillers boys basketball has been fighting hard to stay in postseason contention. On February 5th, they edged Bellingham at home 50 to 48, followed by a loss at Westwood 57 to 43. The Hillers got a big win against Ashland on February 12th, 68 to 57. The Hillers boys will have to win out against Norton and Westwood in order to get the required 10 wins to reach the postseason. Hillers girls basketball played very well this season under first year head coach Mike Greco. The Hillers lost on February 9th against Westwood 64 to 48. They then beat Ashland 54 to 50. The Hillers picked up a couple wins in the Westboro tournament as they beat Shepherd Hill 65 to 45 and Medway 72 to 63. The 14 and 5 playoff bound Hillers have two games left. Congratulations to the Hillers girls swimming team on a terrific showing at the sectionals. Be sure to stay tuned to our website, hkm.tv, for everything Hillers sports. You can also view our sports broadcasts and much more HKM programming on our website and a YouTube page, youtube.com slash HKMTV. A lot of sports and many other programs can be seen airing soon on the HKM channels. Here is Courtney to give you the first look at what to expect with our HKM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, February 19th at 8 p.m., Ashley Olson talks about her photography on a new Hopkinton coffee break. I want to find a mother who, you know, goes above and beyond for others, someone who gives back to their community. Uh, maybe they're going through a hardship and they still look past that and think of others first. On Saturday, February 20th at 10 a.m., the swimming TVL championship match will air. At 6 p.m., the senior night ice hockey match versus Medway will air. On a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, on Monday, February 22nd at 7 p.m., audience members share their original works. That was then, this is now, I'm driving this old car. And I don't think the roads go that far. On Tuesday, February 23rd at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, February 24th at 5 p.m., the basketball doubleheader versus Westwood will air live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, February 25th at 6 p.m., the school committee kindergarten lottery will air live on HCAM TV. The regular meeting will follow at 7 p.m. and will also air live on HCAM TV. On Saturday, February 27th at 10 a.m., the second Lake Massapinock Public Forum will air live on HCAM TV. At 7.30 p.m., a new Dive and Drive-In will air with Angel on my shoulder. The devil makes a deal with gangster Eddie Cagle, but Eddie starts to do more good than bad while disguised as a judge. Mike Prate and Mike Terosian give commentary on the cast and crew.
Reigns reverses his role here from Angel, which he played in Here Comes Mr. Jordan, to the devil in our film. On Sunday, February 28th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from February 22nd will air. We have a new website for the HCAM Insider Newsletter. If you want to sign up, head to hcam.tv slash connect. You'll have all this information and more delivered to you every week. Or if you want to know about current Hopkinton events, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be happy. Spring is only about 30 days away. Thank you for watching. Stop.